Many thanks for staying with us. Now, this week, the world marked World Hypertension Day 2022. The theme of this year's World Hypertension Day is measure your blood pressure, control it, live longer. Hypertension is known as the silent killer for a reason. And tonight, we tell you more about how to detect symptoms and how to manage the condition. I'm joined in studio by Dr. Jelian Mohammed, Director of Cardiology at Aga Khan teaching hospital here in Nairobi. Many thanks for joining us, Dr. Terry. Pleasure. Let's begin with the health problems that are associated with high blood pressure. Hypertension, high blood pressure, the same thing. So the health problems that are associated with this condition. Well, to understand high blood pressure, you have to understand that the heart is a pump. It's pumping blood into the blood vessels of the body and the blood vessels send the blood to the organs of the body. All the organs that are receiving blood have blood vessels within them and if those blood vessels are under a lot of strain or, or pressure, one of two things can happen. The first thing is the blood vessel may burst. If that happens, then there's a leakage of blood. The oxygen that is carried in the blood doesn't get into the organ and that organ will suffer some damage because it depends on oxygen. The other thing is that blood vessel can tear slowly and form little blood clots within it. And those blood clots can then go into smaller vessels and block the supply of oxygen. So one of two things can happen to organs and the most important organs that are affected include the heart, the eyes, the brain, and the kidneys. Uh, and these are the organs that over a period of sustained high blood pressure, blood pressure being high for a long time, uh, the problem can uh, eventually create some serious problems in those arteries and in those organs. Mm -hmm. And they say it is called the silent killer because a lot of people don't actually know that they have high blood pressure. So how do I know if I have high blood pressure? And we'll be projecting um, an image on our screens for you, our viewer, just so that you can take a look at the margins as the doctor explains that. How do I know? if I have high blood pressure. You're absolutely right. Most people who have high blood pressure don't know. In fact, probably 85% um, of Kenyans um, aren't aware that they have high blood pressure when they do have it. It affects about one out of three uh, Kenyans above the age of 25. Uh, and most of those people who have it don't know they've got it. Male or female? It affects everybody, mm -hmm. um, male and female. And Higher numbers? Not really. I mean, uh, probably slightly higher among men, but it's not really the message uh, that's, um, that, that, that's relevant here because it affects everybody. It can affect everybody in, in, in almost an equal way. Um, in terms of how do you find out you've got it, the reason why it's called a silent killer is because it just builds up slowly. You don't feel the blood rushing through your arteries and your body doesn't recognize that the pressure is high in the, put in, in, in the blood vessels. So... What tends to happen is that you wait, you, you, unless you check yourself, something will happen to the organs at some stage. It takes 10 or 15 years, but eventually the organ damage will occur. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we're worried about it is because just like COVID, you could be sitting with it silently, not realizing you've got it, and then eventually it kicks in and, and causes problems. So I go to the hospital um, and my blood pressure is checked. The readings, how should I know if it's high or if it's low or if it's at a normal range? So the way to find out if you have high blood pressure is to get your blood pressure measured. It's either measured around the wrist, around the wrist here or around the arm. And um, there are a variety of readings that could come out of it, but they're usually two numbers. The force of the blood coming out of the heart is what we call the systolic or the higher number. Systolic blood pressure of about 120 is quite normal. And the pressure that stays within the blood vessels after it's circulated is the lower reading, the diastolic pressure. Because of course, after it's been forced out, the, there's still some blood uh, pooling within the vessels. And that's what we call the diastolic pressure. And a normal number for that would be 80. And we aim in general to, 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 towards a blood pressure of 120 over 80. If it's too low, then the blood isn't getting to the organs. And if it's too high, then you're putting a lot of stress on the organs and that causes problems um, that we've discussed already. Mm -hmm. How to manage high blood pressure treatment. Um, and is this reversible? Can you actually um, get better once your readings are high? Does it get reversed? Do you get better? How to manage this condition? Well, it's an excellent question. And the first thing to say is that lifestyle adjustments are really important. Before, 
once you identify that you have high blood pressure, or even before you think you might have high blood pressure, there's certain things that can reduce or manage your blood pressure. Exercise is the best drug ever invented. And if you exercise regularly, maybe 30 to 40 minutes every day, four or five days a week, then your chances of ending up with high blood pressure are much lower. Um, limiting your dietary intake of salt, which contains the, um, uh, the sodium which keeps the fluid in the, in the blood vessels and makes the blood pressure rise. If you can reduce that to less than one teaspoon of salt per day, and that's across all the food that you eat. In other words, whoever's cooking it, um, whoever's preparing it, when you finish you know, having your food, adding salt, the total of that should be less than a teaspoon of, uh, of, of salt per day. If you avoid things like um, smoking, alcohol, these are things that can silently raise your blood pressure and create problems. If you put the lifestyle adjustments to one side, and it's really difficult to do so, but it's really important to do so, um, then assuming that your blood pressure has been found to be high, but you have a reversible cause, and one out of, say, uh, 10 people might have a reversible cause. Weight loss, if you're very overweight, um, there are certain conditions affected, affecting certain hormones which can be detected by a doctor. If those conditions can be detected and reversed with medication, then treatment is essentially effective. But nine out of 10 people don't have a reversible course. And those are people who will actually have to daily take blood pressure. And it's, it's a little bit of a genetic element to it because just like bolding, some people will be genetically mod um, determined to become, you know, develop male pattern boldness and become bold uh, at a certain age. Blood pressure is a bit like that. The problem is, what, the, the good thing is once you detect it, you can do something about it and actually control it. Uh -huh. And we thank you so much for your time, Dr. Jelian Mohammed is the head of cardiology at Aga Khan University Hospital here in Nairobi. And you can forward your questions to him. Your Twitter handle is at Dr. Jelian. At Dr. Jelian. Jelian. J-E-I. Twitter J-E-I-L-A-N. Dr. J. E-I-L-A-N. Um, you can forward your questions or comments to him at Citizen TV Kenya at Lillian underscore Muli. We thank you so much. Remember, it is World Hypertension Week, the World Observed Wild Hypertension Day this week. And uh, of course, I'm um, just getting to know what um, the causes are and how to manage this condition um, with uh, um, our doctor in studio this evening. We're back with all the day sports uh, right here on Friday night with Michael Kinney. Don't go anywhere.